time. I promise you, once you stick to doing what you know is right and grinding your way, connection will come to your life. And it'll happen like that. Got it all the mother and no carnal place. Yeah. And it's amazing, yeah. Getting paper, yeah. Doing what I love, yeah. Alright, y'all. Welcome back. This is episode three, right? Yeah. Of how to make a living reselling. All right, y'all. So basically, I'm going to give y'all a rundown of how I made connections when I first started reselling. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how I do my videos. It's all raw. It's all, it's no cuts. I'm just going to talk to y'all. We're going to keep it 100% honest and open. You know what I'm saying? If I mess up, I mess up. It happens. But I just want to make sure y'all get in it straight off the dome. You feel me? Just straight. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. So basically... Let's see, where should we start? So if I start from the beginning of how to make connections or how I made connections, I would say social media because I didn't fully take advantage of social media when I first started reselling, but I was still making connections and you can make connections without social media, but social media made my connections take off is what I'm saying. So let's go. From the very beginning where I didn't have any money like that and I was just working all the time y'all basically know this if you watched episode one or two is that when I first started I was just like I didn't really have no money I was working all the time you know worked I had two jobs worked in the day worked overnight you know what I'm saying resell shoes and all my free time so my my way of making connections was kind of simple like I didn't care about my jobs like I only wanted to resell shoes for a living and someone just asked me this on my Twitch stream. I'll be giving free advice on Twitch. Gotta have to tap into the stream if you want to see what that's going on. All right. Anyways, when I was on, when I was talking to someone on my Twitch stream, he says he's like, um, "When did you know that you could resell sneakers for a living?" And my answer to that was simple. I always knew. As soon I didn't I, I didn't even have a pair of shoes for profit, and I knew I could resell sneakers for a living. Why? I saw someone else doing it. You see someone else doing something, you can do it too. You just have to actually do it. So, you know what I'm saying? I saw people reselling sneakers for a living. I saw Benjamin Kicks. I saw this dude named Kicks Malik. A couple other people. They're all reselling sneakers for a living. So, it's like, there's no doubt in my mind. I could do the same thing they're doing. Like, I just have to work at it myself. It's just like people, I always go back to any other thing you want to, any other thing it is. Basketball, you want to play basketball, you practice. You can do the same shit you see other people doing on the basketball court. That's how life works, you know what I'm saying? So, when it comes to reselling sneakers, I was already living that, like, even with my jobs, I would tell every single person, I'm the shoe plug. Because that's what I wanted to be. That's what I was working towards. That was my intention. It was like, you need some kicks. I'm going to get you some kicks. You feel me? Hold on real quick. It's hot as hell in my house. I'm going to turn on the AC while we make this video so I don't sit here sweating. All right. And we back. So where was I? I was already living my truth when it came to reselling, you feel me? Like, I knew I wanted to be a sneaker reseller. I knew that's what I was working towards, you feel me? So, I would just tell every single person I ever came in contact with. Now, this is not just for sneaker meetups. This is everybody. So, everyone at my jobs, at both of my jobs, they knew I sold shoes. They knew I was the guy that hit if they needed anything, if they needed any shoes. You know what I'm saying? And I've sold shoes. I sold, when I worked, <laughs> dang, that's crazy. I just realized this. When I worked at Jamba Juice, a uh, smoothie place, I sold shoes to my boss. I sold him some Legend Blue 11s, like uh, DS, you know what I'm saying? I sold shoes to my coworker, Avery. I sold shoes to another coworker, uh, Alyssa. I sold her some Prestos. I sold Avery's bunch of pairs. Avery got like Travis Scott ones from me, uh, freaking Space Jams, Beluga, uh, Yeezys. And these are my coworkers. This is before I had any, I had no YouTube channel. I had no TikTok. I had no nothing. Mind you, I'm selling shoes to people I work with. I'm selling shoes to, to people that are in my neighborhood. I sold someone that lived under uh, in my complex. His name was Johnny. Shout out to that boy Johnny. You know what I'm saying? He copped shoes for me. He copped bricks for me, like $80, like used uh, Jordan um, Jordan 11 lows. You feel me? And I, like I said, I do all this on the top of my head, so I can tell you I'm really talking from memory and experience. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not. There's no no script. Like I sold shoes to people in my. Everyone in my neighborhood knew I sold shoes. I sold them to them. I sold shoes to my sister. She's in the navy. I sold shoes to her friends. I sold shoes to uh, people. Mike. I told everybody that I came in contact with. Like I'm the shoe plug. Anything you need, I can get it for you. And that's what I did. So it'd be like, for an example, 
it's kind of like, okay, so my sister's friend would come home with them from work or something like that. I'd be like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? That I, that I wouldn't even have to tell them. They've been known. I've told them before, you know what I'm saying? If they need anything, they would hit me and be like, you think you could get these? I'd be like, yeah, I can get them. I, I don't know. Now, the, here's the thing you got to realize. You never know if that person's going to shop. That doesn't matter. The point is, you see what they need, you know what I'm saying? Say she says, Space Jam, size 6 Y. At that point, I'm going on every platform and I'm looking for Space Jam size 6 Y. I'm not stopping until I find Space Jam 6 Y. Once I find them, and I'm sure I can cop them, whether it's a meetup or ship, get them shipped in online, I tell them, I, I, I hit up the person that said they wanted Space Jam. And I'd be like, uh, do you still want Space Jam 6 Y? I can get them for you. I can get them for you, there, there'll be 250, is that cool? So say I'm buying them for 200 off somebody. Like I, I found them somewhere off 250. Whether they're used or DS, I'm gonna tell them, and be like, it's a used pair, I can do 250 for them. Let me know if you want them. We can, you know, I can get them for you, whatever. And that's what I did for everybody. So I've probably done that over a thousand times, like all day, any single meetup, every meetup. I told the person after buying some shoes, like, yo, I'm, a sh I'm the shoe plug, like, you know what I'm saying? I just find people's shoes, whatever they need, you know, you know what I'm saying? If you ever got a new pair of personals or something you're looking for, hit me on Instagram, I'll get you right. Like I said, this was when, my, the business card was the first thing I got. When I started making, when I started uh, reselling sneakers, I got the business card before I even had three pairs of shoes. I had a business card. So to put things into uh, perspective for y'all, I didn't even have three pairs of shoes and I had a business card saying, like that that set of rare kicks on it and everything just to let people know like just so I can spread the word you know what I'm saying so I'm telling people like I'm that guy I'm the shoe plug like not like in a boastful like type of way but just in a way that like I'm here to help you like what do you need like I'll find it for a good deal you know what I'm saying so then so that that that's step one that's what I was doing like that's that's starting small that's where everybody starts you know what I'm saying you gotta talk to people like I said in one of my other videos I talk to people all the time I always tell them like I see somebody with some nice shoes on, yo, I like your shoes, like, if you're ever trying to sell them or anything else, like, I buy shoes all the time, you know what I'm saying? The point is just, you got to speak to people and you got to tell them, you got to really be about that. You can't be like, you can't be nervous to tell people that that's what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? If that is the case, maybe you're just not really doing it for real, so it doesn't feel natural to say it. For me, it felt natural to say I'm the shoe plug, so that's all I wanted to do, so you know what I'm saying? It just felt normal, just like, yo, I'm the shoe plug. Speaking of which... My boy behind the camera, Jordan. He has sold me. I think the first pair of shoes was the Platinum Tense Eleven. The first yeah. pair he sold me. Yeah. So the very first pair of shoes Jordan sold me. Uh, I told him I was a shoe plug. Obviously, I told him that. I don't remember what I said fully, but I just remember I told him that because I told everybody that. And um, the the shoes I was picking up from him came from somebody. You know what? That's crazy. If y'all go back to the other video, I mean the earlier in the video when I said uh, I sold shoes to Johnny, right? This is why this is about making connections. Let me show y'all how this connection happened. So I sold shoes to Johnny. Johnny told his friend about me. And he told his friend, I'm the shoe plug. I can get whatever he need. Platinum 10 11s were one of the shoes that he needed, right? So I sourced Platinum 10 11s everywhere. I ended up finding a pair on offer. Jordan's pair. Mind you, I'm only selling them to this guy because I keep telling Johnny, like, I'm the shoe plug. And he messed with me, so he gives me a, I get him a pair that he personally requested. He pays the price because I got them for 50, sold them for 80. You know what I'm saying? Then he tells me to buy his friend. His friend ends up spending, like, over a thousand with me. Just that connection of me talking to Johnny made me sell shoes to his friend for over a thousand dollars total because he bought, like, four or five pairs of brand new Jordan 11s from me. The first pair, though, was some Platinum 10 11s. So I find them on offer, ends up being Jordan. I meet up with Jordan, you know what I'm saying? I buy the Platinum 10 11s, I don't know how much, probably like one something or 200 flat or something like that. So then as soon as I leave meeting up with Jordan, uh, mind you, me and Jordan chop it up a little bit. I was like, oh, you cool people, this is a good deal, you know what I'm saying? So as soon as I leave with Jordan, I go straight to bro. And mind you, I just pay, say 200 for the pair, right? You know what I'm saying? I know I make good profit every time I sold shoes to him. He was really supportive, shout out to my boy, you know what I'm saying, he really did come through but anyway so I still I bring him to Johnny's friend right and it's 250 so I sell them to him for 250 so I make that 50 profit and I'm just like dang like that's really how I was making ends meet like before uh before YouTube TikTok any of the social media shit before any of this that's how I was making ends meet I was just go get some shoes like if anybody wants some shoes you know what I'm saying talk to people find out what they want and I go get it from somebody else and even if I just take 20 profit 
If bro would only pay 20, 220, I would have still ran the same exact thing. Got him for Jordan for 200, go selling him for my profit. But it's just crazy, like, connections are everything, y'all. Like, that connection of me meeting Johnny, I mean, me selling shoes to Johnny, then that brought me to, to he ended up putting me on to his friend, you know what I'm saying, that ended up buying a lot of shoes off me. And he didn't really check market or care about reselling value or anything like that. So he paid good prices for me. So like I said, shout out to bro. Like that was a lot of support, you know what I'm saying? So that ended up me selling shoes to him. And then I ended up having the source of spare for him that ended up making me meet Jordan, which is now a connection because me and him work together. He's been my assistant for like a, a few months. Uh, he's been working, helping me out for a minute. Been like an actual assistant for like, two months or something been going crazy and now we probably gonna work for the next few years together can y'all imagine like that's how much connections matter i would literally have never met jordan if i wasn't talking to everybody Man. talking to johnny Man, that's crazy like that shit literally probably made wouldn't have bought my 11s if no yeah that's crazy it's only because i was talking to johnny and i was always being cool with him and giving him good deals so johnny wanted to recommend me to someone he didn't feel like he got finessed or something he felt like i gave him a great deal that's why he told all his friends his girlfriend everybody shop with me you know what i'm saying Friends shot with me, and that's why I met Jordan. And then Jordan ended up making it like when now we have a connection, like we made a connection. You know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy how shit happened. Like Literally, that. I didn't even know that. That's why. So yeah, y'all, connections are important. So that's that's how I started. Like that's the beginning part of uh, connection. You know what I'm saying? So like, what else? If we if we go on like we step it up like from there, right? And we talk about how, like making bigger connections, like me knowing like Soul and like, you know what I'm saying, a couple other like bigger people and stuff like that. Like, for example, if y'all know No Cap Cole, I know him regardless of this YouTube show. Like that, he was literally like my best friend before we even did YouTube or anything like that. We just lived in the same neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? We used to hang out every day regardless if we weren't, re you know, resellers or anything like that. Before we were even reselling sneakers, seriously. Because he used to resell, like, he used to resell all the time. Not all the time, but he used to resell like hit releases and sell them, you know what I'm saying, back when we were younger, younger. But I was just really buying for collections back then. Till I realized I wanted to move out my mom's house and I didn't want to go to college and didn't want to do any of that stuff. And I wanted to have my own business and then I started reselling too. But you know what I'm saying? So that connection was just happened, it was just gonna happen regardless. But he ended up he ended up knowing Soul prior, like already. So then I ended up getting plugged in with soul you know what i'm saying but for the most part the only reason i was really cool ended up becoming cool with soul was because of tiktok i started grinding tiktok i treated tiktok like it was a nine to five you know what i'm saying and that really that brought a lot now i have a lot of connections you know what i'm saying but it was really because of tiktok tiktok brought the big money connections which is probably what y'all are after but you got to start where i started at the beginning you know what i'm saying to get here because i would never even be here if i didn't start doing if i wasn't the way i was when I didn't have a lot of shoes and a lot of money, which I don't have a lot of money or shoes now, but I have more than I did for sure, you know, so I've made some improvements. So I would say grind social media. I would say to grind it. I would say grind it and show hella love to people and just do your thing. Don't hear, you know what? I really got to point this out because some people don't understand this. Don't show love expecting something back. Hmm. You're not showing love if you're expecting something back. You're on some lame shit if you're doing that. Like, I got people, people always DM me like, yo, I'm a big fan, blah, 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 blah. I really, you know, fuck with your hustle. I really fuck with your grind. Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, your videos are so great. Can you do this for me? Can you give me, I was wondering if you can do this for me. Yeah. Every, I'm reading that, I'm like, that's not real love, bro. That's not like, you're not, you're not really just supporting. Like, you just told me you were supporting so that I would give you something for free. Like, it literally be like, Yo, I'm a big fan of your videos. I was wondering if you could send me some free shoes so I can start reselling. And I'll just be like, nah. No, like <laughs> no, that's not, that's not how it works. And I've given people free shoes, you know what I'm saying? I will send somebody free shoes, but not because you, you tell me, not because you like freaking stroke my ego and tell me like, oh, how much, you know, you like the videos <laughs> and this and that. It's like, okay, I'm not, you think I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, I'll just send you free shoes since you like the videos. Like. I can't do that for everybody. You get a thousand people with me doing that a day. Like, can't do that for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not, and that's not showing love. That's not how you make a connection with me. That's the opposite of how you make a connection. Because now it's just like, bro, you only want, you only want something from me. You only want either some clout. You either want a free shout out. 
you either want a free collab, you either want a free, and it's not that collabs should cost money, it's just that for me, collabs have to be genuine. I don't want to collab with strangers just because you want to use me because you see how many followers I have. Mm, I don't want to collab with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is how you not to make a connection. If you're going to show love to somebody and try to make a connection, it has to be genuine love. Like, I show love to Dev in the lab, you feel me? I don't care if that nigga don't hit me back ever. Like, who cares? He's just doing his thing. I respect that he could hoop. You know what I'm saying? I bought a basketball from his shit. I was trying to buy his shoes, but they sold out. I would do that regardless. He don't have to hit me back. He hasn't hit me back. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm not looking for anything from him. And most people miss that part. Most people just think, oh, I'm going to show some love. I'm going to get some. Most people just think like, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm just tell him that he's cool and then try and get something out of him. Yeah, I can see straight through that. Your intentions are not really to show love. So a major part of can make connection is really show love, which is genuine love, which is where you're just supporting them and then you're doing your own thing. And then if they, if y'all are meant to have that connection, like y'all will have that connection. You know what I'm saying? But show genuine love, like, but not wanting anything in return. You feel me? You feel what I'm saying on that? Yeah, no, I, just, I was thinking, because I remember uh, like a couple days ago when I was sharing like, the old message, when I asked you, like, I was like, yo, if you ever need, like, an assistant to record or anything, and he was like, like, he was like, uh, like, I appreciate it, but right now, I'm, I'm just probably gonna be, um, having my girlfriend help me, yeah. but I basically, I just, like, if, if I need anything, I'll let you know, and I was like, okay, understandable, and then me and you, we kept doing business, like, it wasn't like, I asked you that, and you was like, nah, I'm gonna use my girlfriend, and then I just ghosted you, like, we still, yeah. I still was selling you shoes, Literally. and now I look where I am. That's what I'm saying. Being exactly. your sister like I had. <laughs> exactly. That was the plan all along, dude. Yeah. That shit just actually happened. But it's just because, and I was telling him the other day, like, I get a lot of messages of people wanting to be the assistant. The only reason I ran it with a bro at the time, like, now we're cool as hell because we done hung out so yeah. many times, you know what I'm saying? But back then, the only reason I was running it was because it actually felt genuine. Like, he was helping me regardless. Like, he was just helping me just to do it type shit. And he was telling me shoes all the time, you know what I'm saying? So it was just cool people like I mean he just pull up, help me move my boxes downstairs. But it wasn't on some like he never asked me for anything. He never was like, yo, I'll help you, but are you gonna start paying me or like are yeah. you gonna do this? Like it wasn't like that, you know what I'm saying? Built a genuine connection and then now it's like we probably have a connection for, you know, time to come, you know what I'm saying? But that shit is that shit is crazy how y'all wouldn't believe. I'd probably find a DM right now, somebody asked me for some free shoes. Like they, that's not the way to get it. I promise y'all. DMing your favorite reseller trying to get a handout is not gonna get you anywhere. Yeah. You're holding yourself back. You need to go do your thing, like go grind, and then let people know about your grind while you're not giving a fuck what they're thinking. And while you're still in your own lane, you gotta be in your own lane, and the connections will come to you. That's how that happens. The connections come to you. You don't go out there and like trick a nigga into giving into making a connection. And if you did, it wouldn't last long, and it wouldn't be a good connection. You know what I'm saying? So, mainly that's the best advice. Uh, what time we at? How much we got? Uh, like 18, 20 minutes. 18 minutes? 18, 20 minutes. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can say that will really help people with connections. I mean, you kind of you kind of nailed it right on. We basically were saying, like, just when you help people out, don't do it for anything in return. I do it, like, out of the kindness of your heart. Yeah. That's really, because that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. People get too distracted. They keep thinking that you could force a connection. Like, there's yeah. some trick. Like, there's some trick where you'll get connected with somebody with a lot of followers or something like yeah. that. It the best, like the that. best connections are the ones that come out of nowhere. Where exactly. You, where you're not even, like, like, when you're trying to make a connection, but when you're not trying to force it. Like, you're trying to, like, help people out. And then it's like, oh, like, you just, <laughs> you just, <Exactly. laughs> it just happens. It just happens when you least expect it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I've had some people hit me up that you would think that it's like, oh, okay, I should just do this and do that to make connection. Trust me, I've had a lot. Like, y'all see my channel. Y'all see who I post videos with. Me, Cole, Jordan, that's really it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not really looking for any, like, I'm not looking to bite off of anybody else. I'll collab, collab with people I genuinely want to collab with. I go to R2 B-Ball's gym because I genuinely fuck with Ryan. Like, when the first time I went to Ryan's gym, if y'all know who R2 B-Ball is, check him out on uh, Instagram and YouTube and stuff. The first time I went there, I felt the vibe. It was good vibes. He's a genuine person. We hooped. We literally sat on his gym floor and talked for like three hours straight. Just chatted. He's cool people, so that's a genuine connection. Now, I go hoop with him anytime, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I got some shoes here. I have some plan, a video coming with R2, because I want to collab with him. Not because I saw his follower count, or I saw this or that, and now I want to make a video. No. 
you basketball uh, content creators I want to collab with because I actually would link with them and hoop. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's real. It's not like, I don't want to just collab with people because they have followers. That's not going to get you anywhere anyways. So I've passed on a lot of collabs, y'all, because I'm in my own lane. I'm doing my own thing. The good collabs that I want are going to come. I'm not worried about them. You know what I'm saying? I'm worried about myself and grinding and staying on my shit. You feel me? That's what you should be worried about. You shouldn't be worried about impressing anybody to make a connect connection or doing something for somebody in hopes that they'll do something back for you. Like, nah, do something for somebody if you genuinely want to do that and you don't care if they do anything back for you. A lot of times this isn't the advice, advice y'all want to hear because it just doesn't sound it. Like, why do you want to do that? But honestly, that's called being a good person and good things happen to good people. So be a good person. You're going to make some connections. You know what I'm saying? I got a question. Go ahead. Do you think it's bad for like if someone was like up and coming and like say someone wants to collab with them and like the person like like say for me it's just me like I'm up and coming reseller or whatever and I see someone that wants to collab you think it's wrong for me if I only wanted to collab with him because I see the opportunity that he can make me grow like you think that's that's a bad reason to collab with someone if you if you see like oh like they can. Not like trying to use them, like yeah. But just kind of like I see the opportunity. Like if I was like, I mean, I don't really like, I don't watch YouTube for real. But like I see he has a whole bunch of subscribers. I think it's bad if I turn this down because you know I'm up and coming. I kind of want to grow. So like, so basically, if you see somebody that's doing better than you, and it's like you want to collab with them because it might be an opportunity to. Yeah, if, 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 if they if they reach out to you though, like oh, not, if they reach out to yeah, you. they reach out to you. Uh, honestly, I would, say, <laughs> now cold. I would say, yeah, now I'm cold on God. You can tell. I'm gonna go turn off the AC. <laughs> I put that shit way too low, bro. I saw your teeth. Your teeth chattered, but I was trying to hold it in. I was dead ass freezing because look, we said, look, I'm sitting right under that vent. That yeah. shit got me like. <laughs> 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 but so if a bigger, if a bigger reseller hits you and you see that as an opportunity to grow, it's like, I would say to play it by ear. Because to me, I don't want to tell nobody, like, don't take advantage of that kind of opportunity. Because it could be a good opportunity. But it really depends. You know what I'm saying? It really depends. Because, like, that could be bad. You know what I'm saying? It could be bad, but it could be good. It could be good. The things you got to just see, you got to... I mean, you can talk to the person. I'm not saying to just ignore everyone that said that. But, like, you could talk to them and feel out the vibe. But, like, say, say someone wants to collab with you. But they're into doing like some shit that you're not into doing or something. Or they're just the type of person where it's like, oh, something feels off about this. I don't say, I don't think you should set aside your morals and what you feel is right to link with somebody because they have a bigger following. Mm. And if they say like, this happens a lot with people like, say you're playing basketball and a, a, a super popular big hooper. Like, you're just a little nigga or something and it's like James Harden says, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to like link with you and collab, you know what I'm saying? Let's do something. But then you link with James Harden and all he wants to do is drink, party, and smoke or whatever. And then like, you know, work out less. But you, you were on a grind. Like you were literally working out all day, every single day, blah, 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 blah. But then James Harden got, you started working with James Harden. Now you're slacking because he's already above, he's already doing better than you. So he's slacking and he's like, shit, I'm gonna go party, you know what I'm saying? Cause you're already doing better than you. And that situation, I would tell you to double. I would say, get back on your grind and do your own thing and a, and a connection that's better for you that actually is helping you will come yeah. so that's why you got to play this situation by ear because it could go either way you could link with somebody and make a connection and then it ends up being amazing like you guys start doing a lot of good stuff you know you're working even harder you gotta basically you gotta talk to them and then you gotta decide is this gonna help me or hurt me and you gotta be real with yourself and that's how you really go off a lot of connection like this is not like like before we were talking about talking to people and just getting connection letting people know who you you know who you are these are bigger connections when you're worried about like should you work like say it's a say you're reselling right you're a small reseller this actually happened to me so i'm speaking from experience say you're a smaller reseller somebody wants to kind of work with you on something because he sees you can move a lot of pairs or you can buy a lot of pairs say he owns a store say his store is more so like they'll sell a fake pair to somebody or like you know they're not their customer service they're not really nice to people or they don't really care about that they lie to people they do dishonest service they any of those things you know what i'm saying you got to realize you got to be like nah even though i'm a small reseller and you got a whole store and you're trying to work with me i don't roll like that 
you can stay in your own lane. That's why you got to stay in your lane. You got to let the connections come to you. The connections that are meant to come to you will come to you. If you're in your lane and this guy's in his lane, but his lane is a lot of bad things along with it, you don't want to decide to work with him anyways because you think, oh, he's got a store. He's got more followers. Like he's bigger. And it's like, it'll be help. No, don't even talk yourself into that. You can help yourself. Like you can, you know, you can grind. I promise you, once you stick to doing what you know is right and grinding your way, connections will come to your life. And it'll happen like that. So I say talk to people, but don't think, don't be in the mindset that he has more followers than me. I have to work with him or mm. I have to shop from him or I have to buy from him or sell to him because he has more followers than me. But you could get taken advantage of or it could just lead you down. It could take you astray from your grind. You could be doing great and then start, you know, acting different because somebody with a bigger following or more money wants to work with you or something but he's on some different shit that shit could you know make stuff worse for you you know what i'm saying yeah. you gotta stay in your own lane that's really the best advice i can give for making a kind of connection starting from the bottom that's like y'all you grasp what i was saying just talk to everybody let them know what you're doing you know what i'm saying and then all the way up to if you're making bigger connections with people at the top you know what i'm saying you just got to be mindful, man. Y'all got to be mindful and just stay on your stay on your own grind. Remember that you're on your own grind. You're not you're not uh freaking sacrificing part of your grind for somebody else. That's not what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? And you'll know if something feels wrong, then you'll know it's a dub. And you can't rationalize it by they have more followers. They have, you know what I'm saying? They have more money or they have more connections. Now, you can make connections yourself, bro. Talk to everybody. Tell them what it is. But I'm probably gonna end that segment of this video here. So at the end of every uh at the end of every episode of how I make a living reselling sneakers, we're gonna answer three questions. So I always have Jordan pick three good questions from the comment section and I'm gonna go ahead and answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed that little the advice about making connections and everything like that. I think there's some good, meaningful things in there. Stuff that I learned my own lesson, and I'm telling y'all. This is not because I knew this from the jump and it was perfect. I learned all of this stuff the hard way because I didn't have anybody with me to support me or to help me. I didn't have any, I, I had to learn stuff the hard way. Like when shit happened, it just happened. I had to live with it and work, work around it. Everything I'm talking about was stuff that I noticed was happening, you know what I'm saying? And I had to get right, so yeah, so yeah, so like I said, this is the segment where we uh, answer questions. If you you can leave com you can leave a question in the comment section for this video too, and we'll look through them. And like I said, the best com best questions we'll go ahead and answer some in the next video too. So it could be your question. So you know what I'm saying? <coughs> Sorry, what the fuck? <laughs> you good? <coughs> <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah, Damn, you know what's crazy? I low key drank my last water bottle. Oh, yes, that was, it's like. All right, first question is by Two Charms. So, for the people who don't know, how often do you search for shoes? How many times a week? How many times a week? Yeah. Okay. This question is a very easy answer. You shouldn't even be asking me. There is no. How often? Unless the well, it depends. Okay, this series is how I make a living, reason. So I'm assuming you want to make a living. This is not for if you just want to side hustle. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know how to tell you how to side hustle this shit. Because I've I've been all in. So there is no how often. You look for shoes every chance you get. You literally look for shoes every chance you get. When you have free time, you're looking for shoes. If you're trying to make a living reselling, you're sourcing shoes however you can when but when i first started like before i started like just when i first started making a living recently you know what i'm saying like i was never not looking for shoes like i was always looking for shoes and I, and it was as simple as just like like i said checking every app apps update with a pair so if i check offer up at 9 a.m there's gonna be a different amount of pairs at 10 p.m so i would be checking offer up multiple times a day Every kind of Jordan, just to see, because you never know, you somebody will post a steal, you feel me? Like Facebook, I check the same thing all the time. So, it got to a point, I had trained myself to, which a lot of y'all might not do it to this extent, but it's how you maximize your potential. I had trained myself to only look for shoes when I was on my phone. So like, 
I didn't use my phone for social media. I didn't use my phone for texting anybody, anything of that sort. If I was on my phone, I was looking for shoes. And you can take that which, with what you want and you can decide, oh, I'm a, if that's the case, I'll just look for shoes and, you know, like every night or something like that. That'd be better. But there isn't a hot often. There's not like a two times a week or nothing. I'm always looking for shoes because you never see if I find a crazy deal, right? Say I find a crazy deal, but I don't have the money, but I got five pairs of shoes and someone would, would someone offered on them, but I didn't take the offer. If the deal is crazy enough, I would take the money for the other shoes. I would sell some other shoes, take the money, even if I lost profit. And then I would use that money to buy this steel that I found. And then I would make my profit back or something like that. Like I had a time, like there was a sneaker store that I let cash me out because I knew somebody with a collection. I met somebody with a collection who's letting everything go for super cheap. Like $40 this, $50, you know what I'm saying? Like $60 infrared sixes, DS, like crazy cheap. What the heck? Yeah, $60 infrared, like $100 wave runners, bread 11s. What? Bread 11s for, uh, it was an army dude who had just got back from Japan and he would, he had he had some financial issues so he just got rid of his whole collection. He sold them all to me. I met with him one time. He said he had more pairs. I met with him three more times after that. He sold me red Jordan 11 for $5. I have a TikTok. You can look back. It's proof. It's on TikTok. You can look back at my uh, at my TikTok. If you want. We met up at the park. Sold me red 11s for $5. He sold me bread 11s for 75 Concord 11s for 75 all of these were like very near dead stock mind you I had four pairs of shoes at the time I literally went I went to uh and this is one of the shoes that this is one of the deals that actually made me take off in uh reselling I went to the sneaker store you know what I'm saying I cashed out all my pairs you know what I'm saying and then I, I got like $800 back for all the pairs that I had and I spent all of them with bro I spent. I just bought every shoe that he would sell me. You know what I'm saying? And they were all so low. I was making like a hundred dollars a pair. So I lost like fifty dollars from cashing from letting the sneaker store cash me out. And I made like six, seven hundred dollars off of his uh, collection. Like he had Wave Runners, Inertias, like these Yeezys for a hundred dollars, and they were super clean. And the Wave Runners were going for like four fifty. You know what I'm saying? So I made bread yeah. off of that deal. That was one deal. You know what I'm saying? So wait, what was the, what was the question again? How often you look for shoes? Yeah, so like that's why you have to look for shoes all the time. Yeah. Because if I'm a deal sure. like that comes up, you might need even if you don't have the money, you look for shoes. Because I was looking for shoes, I had no money. I just had the shoes that I already had in stock. As soon as that dude, me and him were texting, you know what I'm saying? As soon as we agreed on a deal, I went to the sneaker store, I took my cash out, whatever he I said, whatever you want to give me for this, bless me. I mean I negotiated, but in my mind, I was like, no matter what, after this negotiation negotiation, I'm taking whatever he whatever he decides on, whatever he'll run, because I need this 100 for some wave runners. You feel me? Like, I'm not going to sit here and wait for these freaking Black Cat 4s I got to sell for me to make 30 profit when I can get some wave runners for 100. So that's why you always got to be looking for steals, because stuff like that will happen. And like I said, I'm speaking from an actual moment. You can watch it on TikTok. But uh, next question. Died by Two Charms, by the way. Appreciate you, Two Charms. Two Charms? Two Charms. Two Charms. Appreciate you, Two Charms, for the question. All right, second one is Gerardo Gacciola. Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, he asked, what do you do with the fake sneaker? Like, let's say you bought a pair of sneakers and you sold it thinking they were authentic and it turns out it was fake and you give that person a full refund and you get the sneakers back. What do you end up doing with it? You know what I'm about to do. So... Wow. In the past, you guys, I, I one time I had I got some fake shoes and I um I ended up giving away to a homeless person. Those are also on TikTok, but that's also on TikTok. But then I kind of felt bad about it because I was just like, I didn't really have to post this. So I was like, I could have just did I could have just gave her the shoes without posting like a TikTok of me like giving a homeless person shoes. So so I'm not really proud of that. You feel me? I feel like we finna you're gonna give something to a homeless person. You should just give it to him. You shouldn't be like. Oh, here and for views, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I felt kind of bad about that shit. That's why, I, that's why I haven't done that for these. But I might just give them away regardless. But I don't know what's better to give these away to because some people don't care about fakes, so they'll just rock them. But these are all shoes that I sold, and it turned out they were food. And of course, I gave someone a full refund, and now I'm back stuck with them. So I got these mochas, these food mochas. I shouldn't really show y'all all these. Cause people gonna DM resellers. Y'all gotta watch these resellers because they be DMing me. When I tell them I got scammed, they be like, I'll buy those off you for a hundred. Sell them to me for a hundred. And I'll be like, 
she trying to do with these, bro. <laughs> these niggas be trying to cap. I got these breads that are full. And I got these pine green ones that are full. I'm only showing y'all this to show y'all just because shit, it's the truth. I've been holding on. I've had these for three months. So, maybe more. I don't even know. I've had these for a long ass time. So, I'm basically only showing y'all to tell y'all that, like, I really don't know. <laughs> the one that, those other fakes, I ended up, uh, giving, giving to a homeless person, like I said. And then, um, I had the, some black toe ones that were foo that I ended up losing 700 on. I posted them on my story as fake. Like I said, okay, these are replicas. If anybody wants them, highest offer takes them. People are offering like 150, 100, 180. There are shoes that go for a thousand if they're real, but they're reps. So I ended up selling them for like 200 to somebody. I guess that's a way for sure. You can definitely post them as fake. Like you can let people know like, oh, these are fake. If you want them, take them because at the end of the day, if you don't do that, it just depends. Like, you have to really just care what people think to not do that. Because I don't give a damn what people think. So I just posted it because, uh, because I was just like, who cares? Somebody will want them for fake. Somebody will want to wear them even though they're fake. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? They all made the same way anyways. But it's like, I really don't know what to do with these. I ha I've had these three for a minute and I was, um, I was going to make a... Uh, a video of me giving them to homeless people. That's why I was keeping them. But then, I, like I said, that TikTok, I didn't feel right about it. I was just like, if I'm gonna give it to homeless people, I should just give it to homeless people. I shouldn't be like, watch me doing this good deed. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's why. That's why they just been sitting here. Cause that was the plan at first. But then, like I said, that shit don't feel right. So I don't know what to do with these. I might just. I don't know. I might just keep them. One thing I one I heard a. Uh, Somebody who uh who be in my live, he has said that like he, his friend or owns a sneaker store and he wanted to buy them off me because he said they use fake shoes sometimes as displays, like just to be like, just like say you have something in a glass case. Like if you just see these in a glass case, you're not gonna think they're fake, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing I could do with them, but I don't really want to do that either. So I'm sorry to tell you, as you see, we're probably, we're basically in the same predicament. Cause I don't really know what to do with these. Cause I was gonna, like I said, I was gonna make use out of them by doing that video, but that shit not cool. Start giving homeless people stuff out of the kindness of my heart, not for views. Yeah. So. Gerardo Gaxuli. That was Gerardo? Yeah, Gerardo. I think I know him. I think he, he's bought shoes from me before. For Gerardo? Yeah. yeah, I think so. What's his last name? Gaxuli? <laughs> wow. That's what you said? <laughs> I said Gaxuli. Let me see. Gaxuli. Gerardo Gaxiola. I dead ass think he I dead ass think he, Gaxiola for yeah, him? I think he's bought some shoes from me. That's what's up. Sure, shout out, out to Gerardo, man. Yeah, I appreciate Gerardo you. Gaxiola. All right, last question. It is by Eric Jimenez. He says he said, when, when's a good time to make a sneaker IG account and how much inventory would I need to start it? Now. What do you mean when is a good time? There's never a bad time, bro. I'm not gonna lie, when I first started my TikTok, I mean, okay, I'm saying that like you should just know that, my bad. Cause I didn't even know that when I first, I, I was tweaking honestly, because but I had learned, now that I know what I know, I can tell you that now is the best time to make a sneaker IG. The thing is, you gotta get out of the mindset of you have to prove something to somebody with this IG. Like you shouldn't be thinking like, oh, if I start a sneaker page, like I need to have all these expensive pairs and I need to have a bunch so I can show this people this, this, and that. Nah, you need to have a sneaker IG just to let people know what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? I like when I first started TikTok, I didn't have no heat. Like I, had, I was getting bricks and something like that. And I was making TikToks of me just like, like this is me, this is me making a TikTok. Boom, I got the camera. I'm just like this, just showing them the shoe and putting some music behind it. Of course, those were boring TikToks and nobody really watched them, but. It was an attempt. A couple of them got a couple thousand views. You feel me? So it wasn't that bad. But if you're if you're just starting out, you should make your Instagram be you doing whatever you're actually doing. So it's not cap. It's not you putting on a facade. It's not you trying to flex. It's just you showing what you're actually doing. What's up with you, bro? This man just went cross-eyed behind the camera. <laughs> you straight? I'm just watching, bro. <laughs> Nigga, you were not just watching. You were literally like. My bad. <laughs> what the, you mean you're bad? Who does that? I don't know. I'm just bored, but bro. All right. <laughs> Anyways, 
it should be like anything that you're doing on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't know, like even if you're saying you, you're customizing some shoes, just make it. Try to put some time into making a good video of you customizing some shoes and post it. If you only got a few pairs, maybe make a make post about you talking about something, some other shoes or something like that. But you can start a sneaker IG whenever. It will get to that point when it's actually at that point, like. When you actually have hella shoes and you actually have hella inventory stuff, your your Instagram will naturally become that. But it's not going to start. Like, you scroll to the very bottom of my Instagram, you're going to see some bricks. You're going to see some KDs. You're going to see some, you know what I'm saying? That means I didn't have no heat. I was just still posting, but I didn't have nothing crazy, you know what I'm saying? That's what you should be on, to be honest. You can start that shit right now. <laughs> There's really no wait for that. There's no need to wait. And it'll grow as you grow. The Instagram will grow as you grow. That's the last one? Yes, sir. How much time we at? Probably like 35, 40 minutes. The whole video? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah, y'all. So, that's basically wrapping up this video, man. I hope y'all enjoyed. I'm going to say next episode is probably going to be on negotiating. I'm going to give y'all some, like, secrets, I guess, like, just really how I got better at negotiating. I don't know if I'm really, it's, I don't know if it's really considered secrets, but I'm just going to tell y'all what made me go from overpaying, losing money, overpaying, losing money to just getting straight steals. Like as soon as I, as soon as I started doing the things I'm going to tell you on the, in the next video, it literally was like that. It was like, I overpaid, I overpaid, I overpaid, I overpaid, boom, mindset, mindset shift, steal, 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 steal. After that mindset shift, complete steals. Like complete steals the rest of my time reselling. Now, when I buy shoes now, I very rarely overpay. Like very rarely. And I can't say like when I first started, I overpaid a lot. And I made dumb purchases a lot. But a lot of it comes with experience too. But so luckily I have the experience to show with y'all to show y'all and you know what I'm saying to tell y'all about it. So stay tuned for that next episode. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all for watching and supporting the series. Hopefully you learned something. If not, Shit, I tried. I'm signing out. <laughs> out of town, never saw her before. Tell her, baby, we don't got that long. Listen, it's not my city show.